Hello! Welcome back to Baking from Books. I am Callan, a reference librarian who loves trying to make things. Emphasis on trying. Uh, today I'm trying to make cream puffs inspired by The Lady's Guide to Petticoats and Piracy by Mackenzie Lee. It's the sequel to A Gentleman's Guide to Vice and Virtue. If you haven't already heard of this amazing series, I really recommend you check it out. It's the sequel to The Gentleman's Guide to Vice and Virtue, in which aspiring Dr. Felicity uses her good sense, quick thinking, and self-taught medical skills to keep her brother Monty, who is very sweet, but frankly a disaster as a person, alive through globe-trotting adventures. In this book, Felicity chases her dream of becoming a doctor, but uh, gets caught up in another fantastic adventure along the way, including uh, an estranged friend and her giant dog, and this mysterious pirate woman, and it's this all kinds of scientific enthusiasm, which is just great to see. It's full of women in science being enthusiastic about discovering the world and learning new things. So it's a fantastic book, and like the original, it's full of humor and adventure and action. This recipe is drawn from the opening scene of The Lady's Guide, uh, in which Felicity has been working as a in a bakery while she tries to convince the medical schools to admit her as a student. And it has not been going well. But And it's been a long time, and she knows she needs to change her strategy. And But in the opening scene, she's distracted thinking about that, and the baker is trying to propose marriage to her by offering her these cream puffs that are the same as the ones that she had when she first came to work for him. So he thinks he's being very romantic. She's not interested in that at all. It's a major journey for her in the book to realize that she doesn't want to get married to anyone ever. And... So in this moment, she's very uncomfortable, and she's trying to find a way to turn down the proposal while still walking away with the cream puff. And nothing has ever been more relatable to me in a book than that. I'd like to credit the blog, A Pretty Life in the Suburbs, for this easy cream puff recipe. Do go check them out. Again, I hope I can do it justice. My fellow Great British Baking Show fans might know cream puffs better as shoe pastry, which has been the bane of many a baker's existence in that show, so I came into this a little bit wary of uh, trying to make this successfully. But they do come out okay, even if they're not the way they're technically supposed to be. And the benefit is it's quite simple. All you need is one stick of butter and one cup of flour mixed with a half teaspoon of salt, and then four eggs. I'm not totally convinced that the, it's the right number of eggs, but, you know, people know better than me when it comes to baking, so we're going to give it a try. You start out boiling one cup of water in a pot on the stove, which is not a usual baking strategy, and what makes this recipe a little bit tricky. Okay, so you get a cup of water boiling on the stove, or in my case, the hot plate, and... I'm not fully boiling mine because I'm trying not to set off the smoke alarms in the library out of courtesy for my co-workers and our patrons. You add your butter to the boiling water, or nearly boiling water, and you stir it around until the butter fully melts, which could take a little while. When your butter's all melted, like this, then you take your one cup of flour and half teaspoon of salt, and you shoot it in all at once. And then you stir it until it forms a ball. And in practice, this didn't take very long. I'm going to interpret this as having formed a ball. It's all incorporated, and it is kind of dough-like. Once you have your ball or ball-like texture, you turn off the heat and remove it from the heat to beat in one egg. So you take the first of your four eggs and you add it into the dough. Oops, not like that. And you beat it in and let it stand for five minutes. Okay, it's been standing for five minutes, so then you add the remaining three eggs one at a time, beating after each addition. So here's egg number two. Here's egg number three. And finally, egg number four. All right, mine looks something like this. I have no idea if this is right, but we're going to let it sit for 10 minutes, um, and then we're going to move on as if it is. Okay, 
After they've been standing for 10 minutes, it's time to put them on the cookie sheet so that they can be baked. And I'm going to use a cookie scoop for this because I tried it with a spoon and it was kind of a pain in the neck. And those of you who watched previous videos will know that me in a piping bag, I don't have the skills yet to do that. So rather than subject you to watching that again, we're going to use a cookie scoop because it's about a tablespoon, which is what it says it's supposed to be. So you just scoop out about a tablespoon's worth and you put it on the cookie sheet, making sure that they're about two inches apart. I guarantee from the way that that's flopping over that these are not right, but hopefully they'll taste good anyway. When you've got your cookie sheet all loaded up, these are too close together, so please do not copy me. You bake them at 375 for 20 to 30 minutes. You're watching for them to puff and get golden brown. So some of them take longer, closer to 30 minutes, depending, it all depends on your oven. When they're all baked, mine come out looking something like this. Um, they're supposed to be taller than this and puffier. Uh, and the idea is that when you crack them open, there's space on the inside to squirt filling in there, like whipped cream or whatever you like. Um, sadly, mine did not do that. They did not puff properly. So you can't put it inside, but I do think, and we're gonna test it, that it would still taste good if you take whipped cream and top it and top your cream puff with it. So let's find out if they're still edible even if they didn't puff. They're definitely still edible, especially with whipped cream or something sweet like that because it's just flour and salt and eggs and butter. So there's not as much sweetness in the puff itself. Not the way I do it. So something sweet to top it or fill it is a nice contrast and it sort of balances out the saltiness. So whipped cream worked. I do recommend whipped cream, but I had this theory when I was getting ready to come that you could also use Nutella or a chocolate spread. So I'm going to test that too, because I think whipped cream improves everything, but so does chocolate. And obviously I can't put it inside or I would try and pipe it in or something, but mine my cream puffs also work as dippers, so you can try it with Nutella, too. With the right filling, they're really quite tasty. I do recommend that. My mom also pointed out that you could put them in the bottom of a bowl and put ice cream and hot fudge on top of it. And especially the way that mine are kind of crumbly, I think that would work really well to make a hot fudge sundae with them. So, there's a lot of different options here. And that's it. That's my attempt at cream puffs. Hopefully, that shows you that if I can do it, you can do it, and you can probably do it better. So don't be afraid to try shoe pastry or cream puffs, however you refer to it. If I was doing it again, which I think I will, I might try beating it with something different. You might have noticed I was using a wooden spoon, and I started wondering if maybe a whisk would work better, or a spatula of some kind. So this is just a good excuse for me to rewatch The Great British Baking Show and see how they make their cream puffs, and I'll try it again their way. In the meantime, please do comment below with any suggestions or tips you have for me, and share your results with us if you make it yourself. I would love to see how you do it, and if it comes out uh, more the way it's supposed to. Tune in again soon for another edition of Baking from Books, and in the meantime, happy reading, happy baking.